4-88-97. Okay, turnovers, takeaways. Let's take care of the ball. Let's get it when they put it on the ground or when they throw it to us. All right? Great effort. Play hard. Every play. Leave it on the field. Ball's out, man. Great effort. National respect. What do you want on your ring? Remember this name. TCU's Ladanian Tomlinson. At season's start, an unknown. Then the numbers grew. When he was done, he led the nation. East Carolina's been on a magical ride. A lengthy stay in the top 20. David Garrard is their leader. An accurate quarterback with the moves of a running back. Two rising programs meet tonight in Mobile, Alabama, Texas Christian, and East Carolina. The city of Mobile is lit up tonight for the very first Mobile, Alabama Bowl, the Horned Frogs of Texas Christian and the Pirates of East Carolina. Hi, everyone. I'm Rich Waltz. Welcome to Mobile. When this season started, no one knew what would happen to East Carolina. They had a difficult September schedule. They played very well. Then they faced the tragic floods from Hurricane Floyd. They overcame those and upset Miami. They became the feel-good story of this college football season. But Rod Gilmore, that kind of obscures the fact that Steve Logan has built an outstanding program in Greenville. Yeah, great program, great offense. You're going to like watching this team play. They run the Bill Walsh passing game with a dash of option to go with it. It'll be fun to watch tonight, Rich. Speaking of dash... When this season started, no one knew the name LaDainian Tomlinson. All he's done is dash his way into the NCAA record books. It's been a great season for him. Great season? How about a great ball game? This guy can do it to you in one ball game. 406 yards against UTEP, an NCAA record. And Rich, I like the way he runs inside, but he's got speed outside when they go to their option. The option for East Carolina is many. When they've got a quarterback like David Garrard, he can throw it. He's got a great touch on the ball. He can run it. He's got outstanding speed. And if he needs to put his head down, he can. He's 6'3", 235. He's an incredible package. Yeah, get out of his way when he puts his head down. I like the fact that this guy does a lot of things. You see him move out of the pocket. He's got great accuracy. He can throw on the run. He can hang in the pocket and throw. But when he decides to run the football, look out. He's got quick feet, but on top of that, he's got power to finish runs, and he'll do that tonight because they'll run some option with him. The nation's leading rusher for Texas Christian and the feel-good story of the year in East Carolina. A great matchup for the very first Mobile, Alabama Bowl. We'll start it after this timeout. Texas Christian co-champs of the WAC and East Carolina, number 19 in the country out of Conference USA. Included in this crowd and standing above it is Don McPherson. Donnie. Hey, Rich, this, is, this season has meant more than wins and losses for East Carolina. You talk about it being a magical season for the team, but for its fans, this has been an inspirational season. In the floods that followed Hurricane Floyd, many people were left without nothing except a team to root for. So on September 25th, more than 40,000 fans traveled 85 miles to see their team face number nine and aptly named Miami Hurricanes. Many say it was the will of the fans that brought this team from behind. But for East Carolina, it was the inspiration of their fans that has carried them through this season. But tonight, there's a football game, and TCU is going to spoil what has been one of the most inspirational st stories about how sport has transcended the field. Thanks, Donnie. East Carolina won the toss, deferred. And Reggie Hunt, one of the nation's leading kick returners for Texas Christian, is out to the 27-yard line. The Horned Frogs of Texas Christian come in at 7-4. and four. They were 5-2, and two, a three-way tie for first place in the WAC. 
and they did it amazingly with a true freshman quarterback out of DeSoto, Texas. Casey Printers completed 57% of his passes, and Rock Gilmore, he ran this option offense very well. Well, the thing he did was that he came to school early and over the summer, learned the offense, he got a chance to play when there was an injury, and he's the man for him now. A three-receiver set, Tomlinson the lone setback. Printers to Tomlinson. He's got a first down, and the Horned Frogs are out to the 43-yard line. It's an option offense. Printers will be pitching it a lot to Tomlinson. George Lane is a very good blocking fullback. On the outside, LaTerrence Dunbar and Mike Scarborough are the favorite targets. Scarborough, 35 catches, eight touchdowns. Up front, very good on the outside with David Bobo and Mike Keithley. They were both whack all-conference selections. Little reverse option. Tomlinson's first carry, and he's drilled. Jeff Carr, one of the best defensive players in the country. East Carolina's defense, 13th in the country in scoring defense. Up front, Bayo Amadou, Norris McClary, and Devon Claybrooks. But the big sticks are in the middle of these linebackers. Jeff Carr and Pernell Griffin, first team all-conference USA in this 3-4 set. Foster and Moreau on the corners, Adams and Satterfield, the safeties. That will go as an incompletion as Printers had it slip out of his hand. No question, not a fumble because the quarterback's arm was moving forward. Anytime there's forward movement, it is a presumption of an incomplete pass. No fumble. In his second year, many have called him a miracle worker. Dennis Franchoni, he won at New Mexico, which is no easy deal. He took a 1-10 team and turned them into a 7-5 victorious bowl team last year. Third down. Printers passes caught by Dunbar. He lost the ball. East Carolina's got it. Anthony Adams. Now he didn't lose the ball. That ball got knocked out by Bernard Williams. Williams punches this ball out. Nice execution here. Printers finding his man inside. Now watch the end of the play. Right there, there's knocked out. A good hit by John Williamson and Bernard Williamson. They're punching it out. That's pretty good defense. Now East Carolina takes over. Their own 42. Gerard. Lots of time. A short pass, which is incomplete. He was looking for Lamont Chapel. Jason Goss on the cover. David Garrard completed 58% of his passes. He ran for 747 yards and eight rushing touchdowns. He was a, a one-man band at times this year. Steve Logan in his eighth season. Known for his offense. East Carolina had an awful lot of it this year. exclusive presentation of the 1999 Mobile Bowl is presented by the City of Mobile, celebrating 300 years of America, the title sponsor for college football's newest bowl game, and in part by Dremel, 
tools for the imagination. College football's newest bowl game is off to a very fast start. Dennis Franchoni, Texas Christian head coach, saw East Carolina go 58 yards. David Garrard to Arnie Powell. Kevin Miller kicks off. This one sails out of bounds. Good field position for the Horned Frogs of Texas Christian. Go back to that touchdown pass rich now watch a smart quarterback he recognizes the blitzing linebackers coming in right now on the zone blitz play gerard sees it right now he gets brazil and bear coming recognizes it, checks off outside against the zone blitz coverage a poor tackling great play russell gary and jason goss can't make the play and arnie powell 58 yards for the score only powell's second touchdown this season you know, Rich, one of the things that happens in a bowl game is the impact of timing. When you have such a long layoff, your timing is thrown off in tackling and in your passing game. And that was poor tackling by TCU that last time out. Powell goes the distance. Casey Printers wide open is Kevin Brown. And Brown is out to the 43-yard line. What about running the option as well, Rod? Timing there as well? Yeah, but you know, so much of your practice time with the option is, you know, you run it against against air. You know, you can do that, but game speed is going to hurt you a little bit. They're going to have to get up to speed with that. But really, for my purposes, I look at this stuff, the passing game and being coordinated and also tackling, because you cannot really practice that much live tackling when you prepare for a bowl game. We'll watch that as the game goes along. Printers. Outstanding speed. He's across midfield. He's got a first down for the 48-yard line. Casey Printers has made nine starts this year. Texas Christian is seven and two in those starts. Well, he was a big recruit for them. And when they went out and got him, brought him into the program, it gave TCU the belief that, hey, they can do some big-time recruiting in Texas. This man was a guy that was sought after by Syracuse, Notre Dame, a lot of other places, and he decided to go to TCU. On first down, Tomlinson hit and stopped a gain of one. When the season started, Patrick Bateau was the quarterback, and Bateau was the guy that led them to a 7-5 record beat the daylights out of USC in the Sun Bowl. Printers was the heir apparent, but when Bateau hurt his thumb against Northwestern, enter Casey Printers. Yeah, you'll see him in this ball game, though. He'll play a little Cordell Stewart. He'll be slashed. He'll be all over the place. And he'll play in the East-West Shrine game in uh, Palo Alto in January. As a wide receiver. Printers. Going deep. Caught at the 20. Scarborough. 28 yards. TCU's had time to come up with some tricks. Now they have a new formation. They come out with one of their backup quarterbacks as a wide receiver down to the bottom right there. And now they spread the field. Throws off ECU a little bit. They don't know how to play for it. They don't recognize number one as a wide receiver. He's a quarterback. It threw him off. Opened it up down the field. First and 10, East Carolina 20. Printers, Tomlinson. Out of bounds, oh, hit late. That's got to be a flag. I didn't see one throw, Rod, but I agree with you. That has to be a flag. Jeff Carr made the hit. Six yards on the carry. Yeah, Tomlinson gets to the sideline. He's got to be three yards outside. And just watch the end of the play. And he gets a nice little job running, but inside, in, in bounds, he's all right. Now watch him when he gets out of bounds. He's out. He's giving himself up. And now he takes a big hit. Looks like it was Jeff Carr that came over with the hit afterwards. You got to flag him for that, Rich. That's a break for East Carolina. It could have been a broken leg. Printers 
They take away the pitch, and Printers is inside the 10. He's got the first down. That's a real key for Texas Christian. Can Printers hurt the defense if they take Tomlinson away? Well, and they're going to try and take Tomlinson away, and that makes sense. Take away the big gun, make the freshman quarterback beat you. And in order for that to work, you really got to have your offensive line do a good job of blocking on the inside linebackers. Here you see the 6'3", 190 pound freshman, a true freshman who watched tape and participated in seven on seven drills all summer long. Two back, lot of option down here. Printers. Printers slides down to the three yard line. Jim Carr made the stop. you got to decide how you want to play. You're going to slow play the quarterback or you're going to go knock him down right away. This time, they decide to slow play. Look to the right side of your screen and you'll see a slow play right there. That's your linebacker, your defensive end who slow plays the pitch and the quarterback and it opens up a lane inside. Printers takes it inside, picks up a lot of yards. And you see at the end of that play, Printers rolled up on the knee of Kevin Brown, a Texas Christian wide receiver who was blocking down at the three-yard line. Here's another look. Ouch. That's just bad luck, you know. Texas Christian, a WAC co-champion, but they'll be headed to Conference USA in two years. That's the conference, of course, of East Carolina, won by Southern Miss. East Carolina finished in a second place tie with Louisville. And Brown is on his way out. Down to the sidelines, Don McPherson, Donnie. Hey, Rich, anytime a team waits a month to play a bowl, a bowl game, the excitement down here on the field is tremendous. Once these teams settle down, I think the pace of the game will start to change a little bit. Patrick Bateau is in to take this snap to Tomlinson. Tomlinson is in. Touchdown, Texas Christian. George Lane with a big block. A huge block. Flag down. He just took Anthony Adams and rode him back into the end zone. That's your, that's your load option. Patient on the defense. The penalty is declined. Touchdown. East Carolina ran some guys on the field there and got caught. 12 men on the field. Yeah, you got 12. You ought to be able to stop that play. And Patrick Bateau gets a chance to take a snap. Well, you heard from Tomlinson on this play, but it's really George Lane up front. Watch what he does to Anthony Adams. He gets him, gets in on him tight and just drives him deep into the end zone. That's a huge block. Not like that. Chris K. Lackey for the extra point. And Texas Christian answers East Carolina. LaDainian Tomlinson. Remember this name. The nation's leading rusher. We're tied at seven. Texas Christian cheerleaders. 7-7 ball game. Tim Rose, the defensive coordinator at East Carolina. What a great year that defense has had. Tenth of the nation against the pass. Very good against the run. Jamie Wilson and Keith Stokes. Deep for East Carolina. to the 28-yard line. This weekend, Sports Century unveils the top four athletes of the 20th century. Friday night, 10 Eastern, ESPN presents athletes number four and number three. Then on Sunday, ABC, the top two athletes of the 20th century will be announced at 5 Eastern. Muhammad Ali, Jim Brown, Michael Jordan, and Babe Ruth remain. For more, log on to ESPN.com, part of the Go Network. Garage, swing pass to Stokes. 
He's planted. Russell Gary, the strong safety, made the hit. East Carolina's offense is very good. It's a one-back set, a West Coast look. Jamie Wilson can catch it and can run it. On the outside, Powell, Chapel, and Harris are big play receivers. Corey Floyd gets the start at tight end. They like to throw to their tight ends. In the middle, Sherwin Lacewell, a first-team all-conference USA center. Just one senior, Derek Gamble, on a talented offensive line. Wilson wrapped up and drops. Texas Christian is outstanding against the run and the pass. First in the whack in every defensive category. It's a 4-2 set. Up front, their sack man is Aaron Schobel. He's a junior with 11 sacks. Just two linebackers, Brazil and Bear. Both are good tacklers. Brazil led the team at 98. Three safeties here. Fuller, Gary, and Hunt with Walls and Goss on the corners. Third down. Gerard. Wilson. To the 26-yard line, Russell Gary, another stop. Now Wilson got ahead of his blockers. You see where he caught that ball upfield. His blockers were behind him. He got a little ahead of him, so the timing was off there for East Carolina in running that screen play. That's something that will get better as they go along. The Pirates have an All-American putter in Andrew Bays, who averaged a gaudy 48 yards a kick. Royce Huffman is deep. 21. Huffman has got some room. Royce Huffman to midfield and the All-American baseball player who is property of the Houston Astros with a big return into East Carolina territory. 51 yards on the kick, 34 yards on the return. A very fast start in the very first Mobile, Alabama Bowl. Tied at seven in Mobile. These guys made a name for themselves by custom building their computers and shipping them to you in about a week. These are the brands you really want. Like this Toshiba notebook, only $11.99, $7.99 after rebate. Think about that. One of these the way you want it on your desk before lunch tomorrow. Order now at PCConnection.com or call one your way Your brand, your way, next day. PC Connection. Hey, guys, if you have thinning hair, call 1-800-HAIR-CLUB now, and we'll send you our new 40-page hair loss update. It covers the most up-to-date information. It's the brightest that moon will be in our lifetimes, Rod. At least that's what we're told. The temperature right around 50 degrees. Not a bad night at all in Mobile, Alabama. Jimmy, that's what we were told. That, that's, that's big news, pal. December 22nd, the winter solstice. Yeah. It's the biggest full moon in a thousand years. And I've got to spend it with you. Oh, oh, you know how to make a guy feel good. <laughs> <laughs> Texas Christian with great field position. Draw play blows up. Jeff Carr can do that to you. Yeah. Down below, Don McPherson, Donnie. Well, you can see Kevin Brown on his way to the locker room. He was hit by Ladanian Thompson or Tom Tomlinson on that last drive. Second down. Little razzle dazzle. Printers for Scarborough. He's got it. Oh, oh no, he dropped it. Oh, we talked about timing. Timing, timing, timing. They ran the play perfectly. But even receivers, the long layoff bridge can affect receivers. Game speed, game condition. And this time, Scarborough dropped this ball. This is the guy who played for John McEvick in Texas a couple years ago before transferring. Gets behind the secondary, wide open, and then drops this ball. If anyone should know about timing, it's Scarborough. Timing in a bowl game. This is his fourth bowl game, Ron. The 95 Sugar, the 97 Fiesta, the Sun Bowl last year. 
The catch by Bateau, and Bateau is down to the 32, flag down, line of scrimmage. Yeah, yeah and that was Slash. And that's the Cordell Stewart we were telling you about. Patrick Bateau is the guy who you mentioned started the season as the quarterback, and they moved him to wide receiver as Printers emerged as the quarterback after his injury. Decline. First down. And Bateau is the kind of guy who could be a slash. He's 6'1", 200 pounds, and can play a lot of positions. He's going to play in the East-West line game where the pro scouts will get a good look at him. Rod, when they were 1-10, and 10, Dennis Franchoni came to Fort Worth and asked Bateau to make the move to quarterback. He sacrificed for him. And Franchoni feels he owes him. That's why he's taken him to the Shrine game. He thinks he can be a wide receiver and a good one. You gotta like that loyalty, don't you? Blitz coming. Oh, he got it off to Tomlinson. Jeff Carr had all but wrapped Casey Printers up. Yeah, that's the second time Jeff Carr has gotten into the backfield like that. And, and he can do it because of his speed. He's one of the fastest inside linebackers in the country. In the middle of the field, he'll just shoot right on in. And if there's no one to grab him right away, forget about it. He's going to be right there. And his running mate, Cornell Griffin, is also fast. So a key for TCU is to get linemen on those inside linebackers and cut out that speed. Second down, eight. Printers to the end zone. Dunbar picked off. Forrest Foster for East Carolina. They'll mark him at the one-yard line. That's a freshman mistake. Casey Printers waited a little bit too long, and Coach Fran is telling him that right now. You saw it early, let it go. He waited a bit long, then he hung that ball, and it gave Foster a chance to come over and make the, ball, make the play. Now he's open. He throws off his back foot. He took a little too long. He hung it up there, and there you see the closing speed of Foster, a second-team all-conference player. Printers this year, seven interceptions with his eight touchdown passes. The progress of Foster was marked back at the two-yard line. Yeah, I thought he grabbed that ball, came down in the end zone. Gerard, got to be careful. And he overshoots Rashawn Burns, his tight end. You know, they didn't give... Foster the benefit of the doubt on this thing. Watch and see if he comes down in the end zone. That's a good call. He's got two steps. His momentum carries him into the end zone. Forrest Foster, that's a pretty good call by the official. Good crew tonight. A big 12 crew. John Laurie is the referee. First time we've seen a two-back set. Wilson trying to get off tackle. He is tackled by Sean Worthen. East Carolina runs this West Coast offense, if you will, or this one-back set that we've seen a lot of from Dennis Erickson and the like. But it really is kind of a branch of the Bill Walsh offense. I mean, that's where Steve Logan learned it, brought it here, and then instead of using the two backs in the backfield like Bill Walsh normally hey. does, he went with the one-back set. But it's still the short passing game, spread the field, and then strike down the field that was popularized by Bill Walsh. On third down, Gerard going deep. Harris off his fingertip. Fourth down. Did you just look at me and mouth timing? <laughs> London Dunlap put the pressure on. That's the second pass we've seen dropped by a receiver. That was a catchable ball. A very catchable ball. And receivers from different teams. Well, you made a great point. You can run seven on seven or Skelly all you want. And that's defensive backs against wide receivers. But until you get in game speed, and it's the adrenaline in the game, and it's the other guy running hard and pushing you a little bit faster. And if you're not running the same way, the ball bounces a little bit more. And you drop it. You miss it. Bays, the All-American punter. Huffman, who is Texas Christian's punter and punt returner. And he gets another good return to the 45-yard line. Jerome Stewart made the stop. Tuesday night.
night, 7.30 Eastern. Bowl week is in full swing on ESPN. The Sylvania Alamo Bowl from San Antonio. Leaping LeVar Arrington, number 17, Penn State, against number 13, Texas A&M. Coverage begins at 7 o'clock with Bowl Game Night. ESPN, your home for Bowl Week. We go down to Don McPherson. Hey, Rich, we noticed East Carolina struggling a little bit with their timing. A couple of those passes were just overthrown by David Garrard. When we talked to the TCU coaches, they sound like they had tried a lot more things, different things, to keep the timing going. They used trash cans to simulate the East Carolina defense. They did more things in that month they had off preparing for this bowl game to keep their players fresh, and it seems to be paying off right now. Great point, Don. You have to come up with ways to make sure you can get your timing down without physically beating up your team when you're preparing for a bowl game. They were prepared last year. They hammered USC in the Sun Bowl. Tomlinson, Anthony Adams made the stop. Nice pickup on first down. Power. That's the other thing about this man you don't often hear about. Power. They run the option, they get outside, but he can power the ball inside. He's about 210 pounds, about 5'9", five, 5'10". Five, Try wrapping your arms around that when he comes inside, so shoulders low, running hard. That's tough to do. On second down, Dunbar, inside screen. Wrapped up by Pernell Griffin. Boy, Pernell Griffin and Jeff Carr are two of the better inside backers we've seen all year. Absolutely, and that's why they're first team all conference. Conference USA. And given their size and their speed, they match up well with any linebackers in the country inside. What does playing in a 3-4 defense do for them? Well, it allows them to use their speed. The way they set things up, everything is pushed to the outside. They run things down. Third down. Critters. He's got the first down to the 28-yard line. Chris Satterfield made the stop. And Rich, if you have speed, you got to have your linemen get out and cut those inside linebackers off so they can't make plays. Watch here. You're going to see them do a nice job of getting inside and cutting off the linebacker. There you see inside guys, Victor Payne, Michael Keithley, getting inside, cutting off Carr and Griffin so they can't get outside and make a play. 30 yards on the ground now for Casey Fredericks on four carries. Tomlinson, he scoops down to the 20-yard line. And this is an East Carolina defense that gave up only 130 yards a game on the ground. Well, they haven't faced a defense that is this diverse. And also, East Carolina's had trouble with option teams in the past. The Air Force and Rice have put up huge numbers against East Carolina defense. And I think that last time, there was a false read or a misread by Jeff Carr inside. He went to the right when the play was inside. And by the time he got back in there, Tomlinson had picked up about a yard. Tomlinson made one miss. And he stopped at the 20. Flags go down after the tackle. Bernard Williams made the stop. I believe that was the end. Dead ball, unsportsmanlike conduct offense. 15 yard penalty, third down. Yeah, they're gonna get George Lane. Yeah, fullback. You know, fullbacks can be rough players. You saw the great block that he had earlier. Watch the end 38. Watch what he does. We'll try and find him inside for you. Right there. Ow! And, you know, I'm surprised they haven't thrown him out of the game. Yeah, John Williamson is the injured player. I don't think we need to telestrate that anymore. No, I mean, Lane's in the middle of the field. He got pushed by somebody, didn't know who it was, and then he just hauled off and hit Williamson. And you know, that's a cheap shot. You can hit guys in the pads. You can do a whole lot of things. And for that, that's just absolutely ridiculous. They ought to throw him out of the ballgame. 
And Dennis Franchoni has taken him out of the ballgame. That's a dumb play. Some guys who do that from time to time, there's no place for it in the game. Third down. It's a costly penalty. Tomlinson. He goes down at the 33-yard line. Bayo Amadou. And you asked the question, was he provoked? And just watch him. He's not provoked here. Watch 38. That's just a sucker punch. Wasn't provoked. Undry Wash, the umpire, was right there. But you know, the sad thing is that umpires don't always see that. Royce Huffman, who is also the punt returner and a very good punter, he's a barefoot punter. And he's a real good third baseman. Yeah, he's a real prospect. Yeah, Houston Astro property. He was an All-American at Texas Christian in baseball. And had no reason to come back and play football other than the fact that he wanted to be a part of this program. He had so much fun last year in a program that went from 1-10 to 7-5 Sun Bowl champions that he decided, and Coach Fran asked him to come back. He said, you got me. But are we surprised? I mean, Coach Fran is a very likable guy. He turns around programs. He did it at New Mexico. He's done it here at TCU. are hoping he puts that shoe right back on. <laughs> <laughs> hoping that he gets rid of the pads altogether. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want your third baseman taking a bruise on his throwing arm. No. He plays a little bit of everything. Wide receiver, he punts, he returns kicks. And now East Carolina takes over. Backed up to their 11-yard line. And now you see East Carolina once again spreading the field, trying to get their receivers in open space in good matchups. Flags are down. Wilson is hit and dropped by Curtis Fuller, the free safety. Check it, it was Leonard Henry. Well, you know, the, Rick, the layoff between games is giving us, I think, what you can expect in most bowl games in the first quarter. Some big plays, some poor tackling, timing off, and some penalties. Penalty flags because people are holding, grabbing. They haven't quite caught up to game speed yet. Second quarter, third quarter, this ought to clear up a little bit. Get, get clean. Offside, defense, penalty is declined. Second down. Rod, bowl games also give us changes in game plans. Have you seen any from either side? Well, I think East Carolina wanted to do a lot more changes than we have seen already. We did see them show four wide receivers, which is something they normally don't do. And TCU came out throwing, which they really don't start the game doing. They broke that tendency. Leonard Henry still in the game. Garrard dumps it quickly to Rashawn Burns. And he's very close to a first down. He's got the first down. Greg Walls made the stop. I think if you see TCU get 10 or 15 more yards, they'll start opening things up again to try and put a lot of stress on the TCU defense. They want to make them think. You don't want those guys just to fly around at you. With this kind of layoff, you want them to think about what checks they have to make, who they have to cut. East Carolina had 12 men in the huddle. Yeah, that, there you go. You know, you have the layoff again, and you run all these different packages, you try things, but you don't have that game rehearsal where guys run on the field, run off the field. Things are a little bit off right now. 
Steve Logan spent his coaching career, at least the start of it, as an assistant coach, an offensive coach, in a lot of wishbone offenses. Secretly, he wanted to run Bill Walsh's West Coast offense. He grabbed every San Francisco 49er game tape he could from the late 70s through the 80s and studied. Gerard, Henry, to the 20, and Henry's out of bounds, short of the first down. You make an excellent point about Logan and his pirating all the 49er films and studying them. And then it was great the way he told us about he actually got to go see the Pope back in 1993 when Bill Walsh was at Stanford. You see the coaches he was under, Jimmy Johnson, John Cooper, and Bill McCartney. The lower three were the guys that were running a lot of that, the top three, I guess, running some offenses he was supposed to be crazy about. But when he went to see Bill Walsh, Walsh spent time with them and told him about the intricacies of his offense, and he learned it pretty well. Gerard slips. Throws it away. Torrey Morris was the intended receiver. You know, he had a real smile on his face, Logan did, talking about playing tennis with Bill Walsh and, and being happy to be there and learning the offense that he said he was playing. He was up 3-2, and then he had to ask himself, do I really want to beat the genius in this game? He didn't. <laughs> Uh, but he wasn't clear about whether he couldn't beat him or he neglected not to. Blitz is coming. Gerard has a ton of time. Down he goes. Whoa, he threw it from his back. Aaron Schobel, the East Carolina coaches are screaming... Yeah, they're screaming for a face a mask. Face mask. Down at this point, right here, fourth down. And they're going to mark him down from where he, he tried to get rid of it. Yeah, you know, sometimes you try to do too much. You believe in your talent so much, you think you can make great plays when they're not there, and watch him try to make something rich when it isn't there. And they probably should have had a flag on that. Absolutely. A break for Tech. Pretty good case for a face mask. Aaron Schobel, watch him as he grabs the face with his left hand and turns the head of David Gerard. That should have been a five-yard penalty. At the very least. Three consecutive three and outs. And Bayes shanks one. A rare misfire from the All-American. Numbers from the first quarter of this Mobile, Alabama Bowl. Now you take a look at East Carolina. Minus 12 yards rushing. That's because of the sack, but really they haven't amounted anything on the ground. TCU, big pass plays, a lot more passing than we expected from them, and they've really controlled the clock. Over 10 minutes, East Carolina's had terrible field position in the first quarter. Texas Christian with a pair of turnovers, a fumble on their first drive, and an interception on the goal line. Casey Printers. Great field position at the 37. Tomlinson slides down to the 40. He's lost three yards. Jeff Carr made the stop. Now you said it. And we talked about Jeff Carr. Jeff Carr outran the defense, the, the offense that time. Carr used his speed to get outside, and he destroyed the play. When your inside linebacker can do that, he'll make the play. Carr starts flowing right away, runs around the blockers, and now he's right there to disrupt the play because he's taken on the fullback. They have him outnumbered. That's a great play. Tomlinson. He's down to the 25. It's a gain of 15. First down, Texas Christian. Again, you've got to block the inside linebackers. Parnell Griffin is right there. Watch him. He's going to get blocked off and can't make the play. But Dalian Tomlinson will get down the field and make yardage. They're blocking off the inside linebackers, Rich. When they block them, Tomlinson makes yardage. When they don't, they get nothing. Tomlinson. Williamson made the stop for East Carolina. But nothing, uh, nothing too fancy for TCU. Just make sure you get a body 
on the inside linebackers, and that man can get more than 34 yards. If you don't, he's going to get wrapped up. Three yards a carry tonight. He averaged seven a carry in a regular season. Printer's going to throw it to the end zone, and it's incomplete. Devon Claybrooks got a piece of printer. John McPherson, what's up? Hey, Rodney, when you talk about defending the option, we see the outside linebacker slow playing the quarterback, trying to draw him in. Well, in that last series when, when TCU was, uh, excuse me, on defense, Reggie Hempel was pulled off the field, the outside linebacker for East Carolina, and, and really got it good from his coach about staying on the quarterback. He was talking about, because when you slow play the option, sometimes you have a tendency to run and chase the back. So they want him to stay on the quarterback. That's right. That's a very good point, Don. Can't get sloppy with that assignment. Third down long. Almost intercepted. Bernard Williams broke it up. But Terrence Dunbar wanted pass interference. Yeah, Rich, I'm a little bit surprised that TCU has not gone to running power inside. Once you get the linebackers flying outside on the option, they become susceptible to the power game inside. And you see this replay here of printers and the, the pick that really should have happened right there. And Bernard Williams had a chance to pick that one off, and he didn't get it. 41 yards now for Chris Kalecki. Blocked! It's the eighth kick that East Carolina has blocked this year. Javon Claybrook. Yeah, and Claybrook, you know, he didn't do all that much. That ball was kicked right into him. I don't think that ball ever got two feet off the ground. Another opportunity by the boards for Texas Christian. <laughs> Seven off. This exclusive presentation of the 1999 Mobile Bowl is brought to you by Honda. Vehicles designed to help simplify your life. The birthplace of Mardi Gras, Mobile, Alabama. Last night, the Grand Marshal, the hit king, Pete Rose. How come Pete didn't get any beads, though? Uh, Pete didn't want the beads. Pete was having a good time at the banquet and the parade and all that good stuff. A lot of a lot of focus is on the kicker, Chris K. Lackey, but in retrospect, as we watch this again, Jeff Dover, his holder, had some problems. Yeah, get Kay Lackey off the hook here. It's not his fault. Watch Dover drop this ball at the end, and there's nothing you can do with that. Ball slips away. Kay Lackey did what he could, and Dover just said, I just dropped the ball, coach. Speaking of timing, it's off there. Richard Alston is in the ball game. Rod, all year long, Steve Logan has let this redshirt freshman quarterback take two series a game. And he's played very well behind David Garrard. And this is his first series of what we expect to have two tonight. Well, it's a good practice of getting your backup quarterback ready to play, and it also prepares your team. As you see his numbers, 236 yards passing this season. The team expects it, so the team is not thrown off by it when he comes into the ball game. No one's looking around pointing fingers and saying, hey, what's he doing in here? Jamie Wilson, who has yet to get on track to the 32. Sean Wortham and Curtis Fuller on the stop. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a little bit more option out of Alston here. Chance for East Carolina to, to break things up a little bit. They finally got a little bit of room. They got out of the shadow of their own goalpost. That now they can run a little thing, run a few more things, open it up a little bit, and kind of get comfortable. They've been struggling ever since they had the big pass play. Here comes that blitz. And it's incomplete. Yeah, he's trying to get the ball to Rashawn Burns, their fine tight end. And they've got to keep the tight end involved in their ball game. He's a real key to their offense, Rich. 39 catches combined for their two tight ends. Doug Martin, their offensive coordinator, told us the tight end is the second most important guy in our offense outside of the quarterback. Hey, you start with a passing offense like that. There he is, right there. 
Doug Martin. Alston. Oh, my goodness. Shannon Brazil said, I don't think so. Glad to see Alston is still in one piece. Shannon Brazil was glad to see him elect to pull that ball down. As a defensive player, you dream of having some open shots like this. And Alston presents one for Brazil. Watch him. He sizes him up. He's thinking, oh, no, no, please, let me have this. Let me have this. And Terrence Mendon stood him up. Too. They both get a piece of it. That's four consecutive three and outs. Bays. Huffman. To the 42-yard line. Mobile, Alabama, East Carolina, and Texas Christian at seven. 7-7. Seven, seven. Texas Christian, East Carolina. Our cameraman getting some Mardi Gras beads. You know, I didn't know Mardi Gras began here. Everyone thinks New Orleans. This was his birthplace. Patrick Bateau is in at quarterback. And Bateau to the 43-yard line. Kevin Monroe made the stop. Very quick start to this football game as we go back to the first quarter. And it started for East Carolina. David Garrard hit Artie Powell, and 58 yards later, the Pirates had the lead. Then LaDainian Tomlinson, the nation's leading rusher, ended a long drive. And that's how we've arrived at 7-7. TCU has dominated the ball game, controlling it on the ground. Printers with a flag down. Printers to the 44-yard line. Antoine Yelverton made the stop. East Carolina caught offside. Now, how can you be offside? I never understood that. You're here to tell me that you never were offside in your career? Offside. Defense, five yards, replay, second down. Well, you know you're taught to watch the ball. Ball doesn't move, you don't move. They'll move the football out to the 49-yard line. You got plenty of other flags, though. <laughs> Late hit, holding. East Carolina. East Carolina still can't get it going on the ground. Four flags. This officiating crew making the flags look like Mardi Gras beats. They're all free. You can have them, huh? Second down. Tomlinson has kind of been held in check today but outside of that touchdown not averaging the, the big yardage yet that we expected of him coming into the ball game he's put up some big numbers this season though. second and eight printers wide open it's caught by tim maiden and tim maiden was down to the 34 yard line 23 yards on the pickup Kevin Monroe made the stop, the junior out of Dallas. Oh, when the quarterback gets outside, he has better vision. It's a lot easier for him to see things. He doesn't have to worry about the defensive lineman and the like. And then it's just pick out your guy. Throw it away or find your guy. And as a defensive player, when that quarterback comes your way, you have to know he's got to throw deep or throw the out. There's not a whole lot of other things he can do. East Carolina didn't recognize him. Printers, Tomlinson, to the 30. Jerome Stewart, the freshman, made the stop for East Carolina. Tomlinson racked up a lot of yards in three games at Arkansas State against San Jose State and UTEP. In fact, exactly half of his yards 
came in those three games. Yeah, that's big yardage in three games. And pretty average or pretty good yardage in the other ones. And, you know, all that came about. You were up late doing that research, uh, figuring out those numbers for us. I couldn't get you to stay up. He's got 39 yards. Add to it a five-yard pickup close to the first down. Well, Rod, he, he kind of labored in the whack, which obviously with the West Coast starts, at times can be an obscure conference in terms of individual performance. Yeah, that's true. But make no mistake about it, he's he's a fine player. He's a guy that if he puts up those kinds of numbers next year, automatically he's going to have to be considered with the, the other guys in the highest race because he's going to lead the nation in rushing if he has those kinds of numbers. He led the nation in rushing this year. has the first down to the 21 yard line now once they get inside the 20 yard line TCU tends to run even more option why do they do that well it's because you see more man-to-man -man coverage down here with the chance to break it down Tomlinson did his damage on the ground in a conference that's better known for its passing attack uh, they're set up in their power formation here, but they can run, they can run their really burnt option out of this formation. Tomlinson to the 21-yard line. Ladanian Tomlinson had one of the biggest days in college football history this year against the University of Texas at El Paso. 43 times he carried the football. 406 yards. And more than just a power back, there you see the speed he has. He's run a 4-4, 40-yard dash, at times cracking just underneath that. So he's got power, size, and speed. Printers, all day to throw, wide open! Scarborough touchdown! He didn't drop that one. Texas Christian with their first lead of the ball game. And Rich, it was the play action pass, or the fake run, if you will, that opened up that passing play. 21 yards from Casey Printers to Mike Scarborough. Good protection by the offensive line. Defense sucking up on the running play. And Scarborough just cruising through the secondary. Casey Peters is 7-2 in his nine starts this year. And he's got Texas Christian on top of number 19, East Carolina. Mike Scarborough, touchdown, Corn Frog, 14-7. Casey Printer showing the poise of a senior. He's a true freshman. And Texas Christian has a 14-7 lead. He's not playing like a true freshman right now. Made one mistake early on with that interception, but settled in. Play action pass. Found his man for the touchdown. Chris K. Laffey with the kick. This is Keith Stokes. Stokes down at the 20-yard line. Let's talk about the impact of Tomlinson. Watch right now. There's your safety force, uh, Chris Satterfield. He's thinking run. And with the play-action pass, he settles in, doesn't get any depth. Now it's too late. Scarborough's running the post behind him. Easy touchdown pass. That's what happens when you have a prolific runner in the backfield who makes your secondary think about stopping the run. Speaking of stopping, what has happened to East Carolina's offense? You know, it hasn't they been got their ball. really effective all game. They had the one catch and run that was a broken play. Jamie Wilson swallowed up by Sean Worthen. Tomorrow night on ESPN, college basketball doubleheader at 7. Fifth-ranked Michigan State heads to Kentucky to battle the Wildcats. And then at 9, number 7, North Carolina against Louisville. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Part of the Go Network, Go.com.
Gerard has his tight end, Corey Floyd. Floyd's got the first down to the 31 yard line. Greg Walls made the stop. So we're talking about the East Carolina offense. Remember, they had that one big play, 58 yards, and that was really after just the really the great running of Powell breaking a, a blown coverage and going on. But their total yardage has not been good. 60 yards, 58 on that pass and catch play, Rich. And then besides that, they have they've been backed up and not able to get into their offense. Only their second first down. Gerard will go down. Take your pick, Aaron Schobel, Chad Bear. Well, I think the other thing that works well for TCU is their set with five defensive backs, really playing with three safeties, allows them to really handle the outside part of the field. They push everything outside, and they make plays out there. And this time, they bring pressure from the outside. Russell Gary, 33, is the last one to come in there to make the play. But Aaron Schobel is in there. Chad Bayer coming inside as well. Flags are down. Bottled by Artie Powell. And dropped. against East Carolina. Broad Steve Logan runs a West Coast passing offense, but he mixes some option in, and he told us that's to keep the blitzing and the pressure off the quarterback. How come we haven't seen some option tonight? We will. We will see some more of it. I'm surprised they haven't run more of it Two early in the ball the play. game. Holding, illegal motion. We'll assess the holding penalty. Ten yards. Replay, second down. The other reason you expected them to run more option is because TCU has had trouble defending the option. Air Force and Rice just ran up big yardage against them each time they played them. The I officials think. trying to decide where to mark this football. And Steve Logan and Doug Martin are trying to decide how to get back Holy into a rhythm. Has been declined. The down will be third. Jerry Patterson, the defensive coordinator for Texas Christian. It's a great defense, fifth in the NCAA in total yardage allowed. East Carolina 0 of 4 on third down tonight. Gerard under pressure. Down he goes at the 28. London Dunlap will not get a sack because it's a one-yard pickup. And it's easy for that front four. It's a pretty good front four to begin with. But these guys are keying off going after the quarterback garage. And they rotate that front four. They play eight guys. And Dunlap was the guy who was in there that time. Got in the backfield to make the play. But all eight of those guys are bringing pressure now whenever they're in the ballgame. Third catch called for and made by Huffman. Texas Christian on top, 14-7. Texas Christian, a 14-7 lead over number 19, East Carolina. Let's go down below. Don McPherson not wearing that outfit, but he's, he's well-dressed for the evening. It's actually a, a very pleasant evening and a good evening for, for offensive football. And when we talk to the TCU coaches, a lot of the things that they said that, that East Carolina does, they said they have the bells and whistles. And right now, I think TCU is keeping things simple, and that's why they're being more productive on offense. Tomlinson popped pretty good at the 36-yard line. Don, what do you think of this Texas Christian offense? We knew they were going to run some option, but as Rod pointed out, they've thrown it an awful lot. Well, they really are struggling. I think, again, because they do so many things, they're struggling to find a groove. They've tried a little bit of this and a little bit of that. I think they need to stick with one thing and get the kinks worked out. They still look very rusty. Second down. And 12. Printers. Dumps it out to Tomlinson. 
to the 47-yard line. A very good play. That's a matchup that you really don't want to have if you're East Carolina. Tomlinson coming out of the backfield matched up against Eric Reyes, the linebacker. Coach Fran created that matchup. We haven't seen Tomlinson do that yet. That's another change, a little wrinkle we've seen getting him out there. Patrick Bateau. You mean slash, right? Bateau. He's across midfield. Patrick Bateau. To the 18-yard line. Bernard Williams made the stop. 35 yards for the senior out of Sugarland, Texas. That's that Whirly Bird option. Bateau comes in to do it. And here he is. You'll see him reverse pivot and come out. And then the fullback will lead. Trailing is the pitch man. That's their load option. Here he comes. Whirly Bird makes him pause just a moment in the secondary. And there is no guy there to deal with. The load blocker, the fullback, has to go 20 yards down the field to find someone to block. Casey Printers likes what he sees. It looks like Bateau is a little more aggressive on that option. He had great success doing it last year as the starting quarterback. And Coach Fran, true to his word, is using him tonight. Go back to last year. Texas Christian, an underdog to USC. And Patrick Bateau in the Sun Bowl was awesome. He can run that play there again. That speed or load option outside. Bateau doing it. Doing it well. He'll be doing it in the East-West Shrine game. Gil Brand, who is synonymous with great general managers in pro football, helps put together the list of players who play in that ball game. And he's got Bateau playing in that game, that East-West Shrine game. That's going to be a blast. Coach Brand said he was going to put him at wide receiver. And that's where he'll be in that Shrine game. Printers is back in. First and ten, Texas Christian. Right. They're offset now with their back to the right side. This is usually one of their power formations, Rich. Tomlinson to the ten. Close to the first down. When they, when they put George Lane off to the right side or the left side, away from the eye position, they set him up for blocking, and then they tend to run that way. That's one of those tendencies that you would think that East Carolina knows it, would jump on it, and would load up on that thing. Well, I'm sure a lot of guys in the WAC tried to load up on TCU. But a lot of guys would like to load up on lane now. Tomlinson sports to the five. He's got the first down. The Texas Christian has got a first and goal from the East Carolina five-yard line. Remember we talked about the adjustment that TCU would make. They'd run option, get the linebackers flying outside, and then come back with the power game inside. They're pounding them now. They're knocking on them, and they're saying, oh, you want to run outside and stop the option? Let's see how tough you are. Can you stand inside and stop our power game? But Toe in a quarterback, and he's going to call a timeout. Coach Fran and the Horned Frogs on top. Back to Mobile after this. And Texas Christian on top of East Carolina. Big weekend in the NFL Sunday night, 815 Eastern. Washington heads to 3Com to take on Jerry Rice and the 49ers on ESPN Sunday Night Football. ABC Monday Night Football. Bill Parcells and the Jets take on the Dolphins and Dan Marino. ESPN and ABC, your exclusive home for primetime NFL football. Teams can't afford to lose anything now. It's playoff time for the NFL. Two weeks left in the NFL season. Patrick Bateau back in on first and goal. 
Tomlinson. Caught at the three-yard line. That time you saw John Williamson, number 30, do a better job of slow playing the quarterback. He worked from the quarterback to the pitch man. Gave him a chance to make a play. And you see, somebody needs to step up for, East, for uh, East Carolina. They need some leadership. That's a young team out there. Offensively, they've been struggling. Sophomore quarterback, they haven't taken control. Their defense, need a, they need a leader. Somebody like Williamson to step up and make plays for them. Batel still in a quarterback. Huffman in motion. Tomlinson is in. Touchdown, Texas Christian. You have to be impressed with the power game that TCU is running. They're an option team, and they're punching ECU in the mouth right now. Jeff Carr tried to make that play, mistimed it, and when he came flying through there, it left a big hole to Tomlinson. Extra point up and good. Seven, Texas Christian and well, Tomlinson is up to 63 yards now. Yeah, he's starting to get it going and ECU's got to find a way to get it going. There you see Carr. He's going to come inside. He reads this thing. He knows what it is, but he comes a little bit too soon. And when he gets in there, he misses it. A little bit later or a little bit sooner, he could have made the play. But his timing on that one, just a little bit off. He comes flying in there. Don't even have to block him. Runs himself out of the play. Victor Payne had a big block there. The big left guard. There he is. Almost got there. And I think East Carolina right now is a little stunned, to say the least. There was certainly a feeling among the East Carolina contingent that they were ready to come out and show the country that they definitely belong in the top 20. And this is their chance to shine. Right now, they haven't been shining. Keith Stokes at the four. Out to the 34-yard line. George Lane on the special teams made the stop. You go back to the pregame pep talk that you heard. Coach Fran told us seemed to be physical to, to, to really make sure you don't leave it out there. They haven't done that. They've been physical. Coach Fran will be busy at halftime, but we won't. We'll entertain you with this halftime report. Images of the millennium in college football, NBA highlights, and baseball news as well. Jamie Wilson, or rather it's Leonard Henry, and Henry is across midfield to the 42-yard line. Chad Baird made the stop. It's the biggest pickup for East Carolina on the ground. And now clock management becomes a big issue for East Carolina. They've got a chance to make something happen. They run this draw play. TCU bites on it, and it opens up. And so now they have a chance to manage the clock and get some points out of this thing. Clock is rolling. They just wasted 10 seconds. Gerard. He's going down at midfield, Aaron Schobel. You know, Rich, at this point, you just let it go. You let it go, and you go to the locker room. They had a chance to manage the clock. They had some timeouts. They didn't use them. They didn't get things going. Now you simply let it go and go in at halftime. And now East Carolina will burn a timeout. Well, why now? There were 35 seconds when that run by Henry ended. By the time... East Carolina broke the huddle and snapped the ball. It was down to 25. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you hurry up and get to the line of scrimmage, you can run a play. If you don't, you burn the timeout, collect your thoughts, and then run your place. Now you rush. You don't get anything happening. You get a sack, and now you burn off another five or eight seconds, and you call your timeout, and you're in a desperate situation. I don't know how you can really hope to get something out of this. Let's go down below Don McPherson. 
Hey, Rod, you're exactly right. East Carolina is not managing the clock, clock well. And on the sideline, there's just no reaction from this team as to what's going on. Some of the bickering and, and fighting has already started with some of the defensive players, but the rest of the team is extremely flat right now and not responding at all. I think you're right about that, Don. If I were Steve Logan right now, I, I would just get my team off the field, get into the locker room, and try to play the second half. They're only two plays away from tying the game up. Shotgun for Gerard. Pulling on the run. Caught, and that's field goal range at the 25-yard line. Lamont Chapel made the catch. Well, Steve Logan felt he had a guy who could make a play. And David Garrard makes a play. And Lamont Chappelle, Chapel makes a nice catch, gets those feet in bounds. Now they have a shot at a field goal. Kevin Miller will attempt a 42-yarder. with a very impressive first half. They lead number 19, East Carolina, 21-7. It's halftime. Bring on Chris Fowler. Chris? Rich, thank you very much. TCU's defense making Dave... ...was the very first Mobile, Alabama Bowl, and Texas Christian is on top of number 19, East Carolina. Rich Waltz along with Rod Gilmore. You talked about timing and how it's difficult for both teams. It did not look like it was difficult for Texas Christian in the first half. Well, they became physical. The real difference for them, option outside. Then they started pounding it inside, and that started to wear on ECU. I think they started to dominate them and really kind of shocked them to have how physical they were. That's kind of the M.O. of LaDainian Tomlinson, their running back. Hey, he's a powerful man, and he did some powerful things in the first half. Right here, you'll see him finish off his first touchdown run on the pitch out here, and a great block up front by Lane first score for them and then they come right back printers again deep down the field rich finding his man scarborough for the touchdown and then once again to finish it off tomlinson powering his way inside for the short touchdown run and then david garrard knocked around tremendously in the first half by that defense that was putting a lot of pressure on them in the backfield tomlinson averaged 168 yards per game they had a good first half of 63 yards but the numbers here showed Texas Christian with 271 yards. They had two turnovers, but they also possessed the football twice as long as East Carolina. Well, East Carolina's got to get something going on the ground. And they haven't gotten Wilson involved in the run game. They haven't run much option. You and I talked about that. We haven't seen it. There's got to be more of that coming. I think they've got to get Gerard involved that way. Get him knocked around some so he starts feeling like he's a part of the game besides being knocked around in his own backfield. Steve Logan, his offense struck quickly and then struggled. Yeah, now of those two plays for 58 yards, one play went for 58. Keith Stokes deep for the kickoff from Chris K. Lackey. Stokes. And Stokes has got some room. Stokes is across midfield. George Lane made the stop on the special teams. And a good start for East Carolina. And if you're East Carolina, you're looking for leaders. And right now, who's going to step up and be a leader? Is it David Garrard, your sophomore quarterback? Are people going to turn to him and ask him to make the play and have him lead them back into this ball game? But East Carolina needs a leader, Rich. That's field position for an East Carolina drive. Wilson goes down at midfield. Don McPherson, what's up? Hey, Rich, talk to both coaches. Steve Logan, East Carolina, said he wants to get his team to reestablish or establish themselves early in the third quarter he was very unhappy with the way his team played he said they were flat and very inconsistent of course on the other, other side of the field Dennis Franchone could not be happy with his team both coaches feel like this team this game could be a blowout in favor of Texas, Texas Christian if it weren't for a couple of silly plays 
but Dexter, Texas Christian, they want to keep doing everything they did in the first half. Chapel with the catch, and he's got the first down. Lamont Chapel. Greg Walls hauls him down after a 12-yard pickup. Well, there you see one of the first adjustments that they made. Quickly get rid of the ball. Three-step, Gerard, get rid of the ball. No more five-step, no more hold the ball. Get back there, get rid of it quickly. Four sacks in the first half. Now we've seen the very first adjustment coming out in the second half for East Carolina. and it goes nowhere. Aaron Schobel made the stop. That's a loss of six yards. And Curtis Fuller was in there, too. And you know what happens at halftime? You put plays up on the board, and then your coach says also, hey, they might try this. Be ready for this. This was one of the things TCU talked about. We haven't seen option. We're going to get some option. When we get option, flush it outside. Let our safeties make the play. That's the way the defense is designed. Curtis Fuller in there to make the team up play. That option is designed to take heat off East Carolina quarterbacks. Four sacks in the first half. Gerard to the 43. He'll pick up only three. Third down and long. But, you know, we talked about TCU using this four down linemen, two inside linebacker, five defensive back set. That's working for them. With the five defensive back, it gives them leverage on both sides for the option and for keeping things inside so they can make play. They have fast guys running around back there. They're not letting East Carolina stretch them wide. Not at all. Especially down on third down. They're all five. Flags down. Gerard. Over the middle. It's caught by Stokes. To the 27. Russell Gary the stop. Well, that was a BB. 16 yards. Well, he's got a, a very Outside. strong arm. Defense. Bob. Finley's decline. First down. Hey, Rich. Remember East Carolina was flat against Miami. They had the tough week following the flood. Away for a week. They came out in that first half. They were down by 20 points. In the second half, they got it together and came on to win that ball game. Could we see that again tonight? The draw to Wilson. Schobel made the stop. Brazil also in on it. And you think back to that Miami game, and we talk about leaders. East Carolina found a leader in that ball game in Lamont Chapel. He had eight catches in that ball game, most of them in the second half. Big plays, and that made a big difference for them. And they need leadership now. Maybe he'll make the play. Maybe still. On second and long. Gerard to the 25. Curtis Fuller made the stop. You know, when Steve Logan had his football camp at East Carolina, four years ago, a kid showed up at 6'3", 270 pounds. Hey, they, thought he, they thought he was a lineman. <laughs> he was a biscuit short of 275. Isn't that what the coaches told us? Yeah. Well, that's a unit of measure in some places. <laughs> it was Gerard. They told him to go with the lineman. He said, no, I'm a quarterback. They gave him the ball, and he threw about a 50-yard BB, and they said, all right, you're a quarterback. Blitz coming. Incomplete. Russell Gary on the pressure of Gerard. Well, you can't uh, blame the East Carolina coaches for being confused and thinking he was a lineman. One of the guys he was hanging around with, around with back in those days was Sherwin Lacewell, who's the center on this team who goes at 6'2", six, six, two, 290. And Lacewell was about the same size as Gerard. No wonder they thought they were linemen. Everyone who recruited him wanted him to be something else. Florida said you're a tight end. Tennessee said you're a fullback. Gerard went to East Carolina to play quarterback. And on fourth and eight, he stands up, goes deep. Powell! Never saw it. Jason Goss on the coverage. That 
just a miscommunication. Gerard read the covers one way and thought the adjustment would be the fade route. Powell didn't see it that way. There you see the coverage, and he's thinking, okay, I got what I want, let me put it up. He didn't get the guy, Powell, to read it the same way. And that's a throw designed for him to come back to absolutely, the ball. Absolutely, absolutely, and they just misread each other. There you see, Logan is talking to him. He's not talking to Gerard. Gerard made the right throw. Powell didn't make the right read. George Lane's first carry. And Bayo Amadou, the junior out of Washington, D.C., made the stop. Well, this is where East Carolina can get it turned around. You make a play on defense, make a couple plays, and get your team back into the game. Get some life, get some momentum. But somebody will have to make a play. They've been standing around all night, Rich, waiting for somebody to do something. Somebody for East Carolina defensively has got to make a play to change the momentum. Printer. Throws. Tumbling is Dunbar. He can't hold it. Third down and long. Anthony Adams is on the coverage there. I'll tell you one thing about Brennan. He is no longer a freshman. He's not playing like a youngster, and after all the games he started this season, you can't treat him like a freshman any longer. He is very poised back there. Start number 10. Down he goes. Devon Claybrook. Smart play. Casey Printers recognized he had nothing there, and he doesn't allow something bad to happen. He sees it's not there. He's in a bad situation. Forget about it. Take it down, and then go and let your team punt it away. is deep. Huffman sends it out of bounds. East Carolina gets it right at midfield. 28 yards on the punt. East Carolina with the ball down by 14. SPN 2's exclusive presentation of the 1999 Mobile Bowl is brought to you by the Intel Pentium 3 processor. Don't just get onto the internet, get into it at intel.com. And by the Remington Microscreen 3. You'll shave incredibly close, guaranteed. Both teams had a tour of that USS Alabama back on Sunday when this poll week started. David Garrard, the option strung out right to midfield. And that was different. They ran their options differently. They came with the load by using their tight ends. They brought two tight ends into the ball game. Put one on the line of scrimmage and one in the backfield to try to get more blocking on the perimeter for that load option. Now you're starting to see them, them fool around with their offensive sets to try to find a way to get something going in the outside running game. There's Rashawn Burns, 25 catches coming in. They have been unable to get him the football tonight. And that's a big part of East Carolina's offense. He's got just one catch. Gerard to the sideline, Wilson to the 45. He's short of the first down. Third down and about five. That's an option, but that's a pass option. Two receivers to the bottom side of the field. Have them run down and spread, and then you have your choice of which one to throw to. You put pressure on that one corner out there to make him choose who he wants. And Gerard just goes to the other one. Gerard does not like what he sees. And he'll call a timeout. Steve Logan trying to find out what's going on. Down near the Gulf of Bowl, Hawaii, Oregon State, Saturday at 8.30 on ESPN. The Mobile.
Mobile, Alabama ball, the very first one, and a good-sized crowd on hand. Texas Christian surprising everyone, except maybe themselves, with a 21-7 lead. Third down five for East Carolina. Gerard caught by Wilson, close to the first down. He may have it with second effort. Shannon Brazil made the stop. And really, that's the same play as they ran last time. Different formation. Receiver on the line of scrimmage. Guy out of the backfield this time. Same two guys working on the same area and option. One goes in, one goes out. Give yourself a chance to let the quarterback choose which one he wants. Short of the first down. I like the call. Fourth down here. They had nothing going. No one has stepped up to make a play. Steve Logan has got to do something to jar this team to change momentum. And this fourth down play is an opportunity to do that. Gerard keeps it. Oh, is he close. He is right at the 40, and that's exactly where he had to get. Yeah, I, th I thought they were going to give him more progress slightly beyond the 40. Seems that he got there, and the ball may even have crossed the plane of the 40. And from where the marker is, it ought to be a first down. Coach Fran wants a measurement. Yeah, the officials is. have given him a first down. Uh, that, that was a first down. The marker is on the right side of the 40-yard line. The ball got at least to the 40. Stokes is going to be dropped back at the 48-yard line. Aaron Schobel stopped him. What went wrong there? Everything. <laughs> Everything went wrong. And you don't want to give up ground, and Stokes did. And now they're in a bad way. They got about a second and 18, second and 19 they're looking at. Texas Christian's defense has been overlooked all year. When you have the nation's leading rusher, that can happen. But they have sparkled here tonight. And here they come on a blitz. Garrard's in trouble. Oh, he had a man wide open. Corey Floyd had no one with him. Sean Worthen made sure Garrard couldn't find him. TCU is too quick up front. They can't let... TCU just can't get to a five-step drop and throw the ball. TCU comes hard off the corner and inside. You're going to see Schnobel. Schnobel from the outside, 14, and Worthington. Worthen inside, 95. Too quick, too strong. They haven't been able to use the five-step drop all night, Rich. One of eight on third down. This is a long one. Gerard to the sideline. It is caught. How about that? Lamont Chapel took it away. Well, he's the guy we talked about as being someone who can make a play and show some leadership. He did it against Miami with eight catches in that game. And on that play, Rich, he made a play. This is what we've been talking about. Somebody stepping up. And who is it? It's the senior. The guy who did it against Miami makes a big catch, which should give ECU some life. That ball is picked off. Russell Gary is sitting there waiting for it. And Lamont Chapel goes up and takes it away from him. Right back to action on the ground. Kyle Williams making the stop. Jamie Wilson, the ball carrier. I, I tell you what I do right now. I go back and I get that ball again to Chapel. He's making plays for you. He's the guy you want to get in a situation who can make another play. And Steve Logan has got to be thinking, I want playmakers right now. And he knows 87 is a playmaker. It's a trip set with three receivers on the left side. And a quick screen is set up. There's your playmaker, Chapel. Now, was Logan listening to you? He, hey, he should be. He didn't have to. He knows it as well as I do. Your team is behind, and they're lethargic. You need somebody to step up and make a play. And this guy has done it. And now that he's done it once for you, he's got the hot hand. You go back to him and let him get you back in the ball game. And if he does that, maybe it'll spark a fire with everybody else. Jamie Wilson. 
to the five. He dives. He's in. Touchdown, East Carolina. 13 yards for Wilson. Jamie Wilson, but it was Chapel who got them back in the ball game and gave them the spot. A spark for Steve Logan and the Pirates. Jamie Wilson in the end zone. East Carolina down seven. These guys have made a name for themselves by custom building their computers and shipping them to you in about a week. Bad news for East Carolina. Their fine freshman kicker, Kevin Miller, who had missed the final four regular season games with a pulled quadricep, limped to the sideline after that point. That could be an issue for them, and it forces Andrew Bays to kick off now. He's got a good right leg, and it's an onside kick, and East Carolina has got it. What a gutsy call by Steve Logan. Forrest Foster with the recovery. his team fired up a couple big plays on offense and then his onside kick TCU not expecting it totally surprised perfect timing ECU back in business and David Garrard back and throwing caught on the sideline out of bounds incomplete Rich, let's go back to that onside kick. See, here's your first line. Normally, those guys will go back, and they will hear. They will not check for onside kick. That's their first responsibility, check for onside kick. They start retreating, and now it's too late. By the time they recognize it, ECU has the ball. That was an outstanding kick by Bayes. Short throw is caught. Arnie Powell, who had the long touchdown run, is close to a first down, just short of it. Saturday, 8.30 Eastern on ESPN, the Jeep Oahu Bowl from Honolulu, Oregon State, and Dennis Erickson in a bowl for the first time since 1965. They'll take on Hawaii. Dan Robinson, their quarterback, June Jones, has the Rainbows bowling. ESPN, your home for bowl week. Book him, Dano. Thank you. Dan Robinson. Dan Robinson and, and Jim Jones. What, two great stories with both Jim Jones and Dennis Erickson going from the NFL to the college ranks. And Henry's dropped. Russell Gary from his safety spot. And yeah, Russell, Chad Bear. Yeah, Russell Gary was there to make the play at the end. But there were a lot of horned frogs in that backfield. They saw that option thing coming right from the start and put a lot of pressure on. And all the momentum that was gained on the onside kick recovery is gone. Huffman, fair catch at the 15. Down below, Don McPherson, Donnie. Rich, I'm joined now with, by the mayor of Mobile, Michael Dow. Mayor Dow, this is an a, a extraordinary effort in the first Mobile, Alabama Mobile Bowl. Uh, what was the effort like to bring this bowl to, to Mobile? Well, it's all about economic development and jobs, and uh, we try to stay focused on that. He's got uh, the Mike Gottfried is fantastic. You guys all know Mike. He's a fantastic individual, and we invested in Mike. This is unique, and the city has sponsored this bowl. We didn't have a corporate sponsor. 
We paid the money for this, the Mobile Alabama Bowl. It's unique, and this is our second bowl game. We have the Senior Bowl here as well. And we just feel that sports and recreation, entertainment, arts, and culture are a big part of the economic development and marketing of a city. And uh, Mobile is a great city, and we're going to go into this, this next decade very strongly. Mr. Mayor, thank you very much. Rich, I'm also joined by Clinton Johnson, city councilman here in Mobile for 16 years. What has the, happened in the community bringing this bowl here to, to Mobile? It has brought a great deal of excitement, fun, fantastic time tonight. We're just enjoying the festivities and looking forward to next year. You all have done a, a tremendous job of welcoming people. How has it been uh, in, in the local community in terms of bringing fans in from out of town into the city? It has been a pleasure. It has been something fantastic for our city. The people have been quite kind in coming, and we think after having come, they'll come back again next time, and we hope that uh, we'll continue a bowl game here in our city. Well, Mobile's been very good to us at ESPN, and we'll we will be back next year for this bowl game. Thanks very much. Thanks, John. Over 34,000 on him. That's a pretty legitimate number because a lot of people have come from East Carolina. Texas Christian traveled very well to this game as well. And it's been a fun time, too. Casey Printer. Wide open on the sideline is Tim Maiden. And he's right out to midfield. 18 yards on the pickup. You talk about people coming to this bowl game. How about some of the guys we got to meet yesterday at the banquet? Your hero, my hero, Kenny Stabler from Alabama was here, and others as well. Yes, Pete Rose was there. Uh, Tom Dempsey was there. Gates Brown, a lot of the guys that had a history in the Mobile area. 1,700 people attended that luncheon. Tomlinson drops. Javon Claybrook. Our, our pal uh, Mike Godfrey has been Mr. Everything down here this week, seeing him run around, making all the arrangements, getting this thing pulled together, and the people here in Mobile have just been so wonderful. It's been a great time, and they really did a tremendous job pulling this thing off. You know, Mike did a very smart thing by showering the ESPN crew <laughs> with gifts and, and shirts and, and small trinkets and, and tokens of his appreciation. It's been a fun time. Second down and ten. Flags are down. Tomlinson is down. Another flag goes down as Tomlinson lands at the 45-yard line. Coach Fran watching. This one is coming back. Christmas Eve, Rod. I know you'll be sitting by the fireplace waiting for St. Nick. But I'll be in front of the television, 7.30 Eastern. It's the 1999 Circuit City Bowl kickoff show. Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, Kirk Herbstreit, and a few elves and some reindeer. We'll talk about all the bowl matchups, latest news and information around each bowl game. ESPN, of course, is your home for bowl week. We'll be sending Mike Gottfried away from Mobile. So let me get this right. You'll enjoy this wonderful moon with me tonight, but no Christmas Eve? Yeah. What's up with that? Well, today Santa's got horns on. And that, my friends, is a horned frog. Second and 15. Critters goes down. John Williamson made the stop. For the most part, East Carolina has defended that option pretty well. Well, it's because of Williamson. And he's done a real nice job out there on the edge as an outside linebacker, if you will, playing that thing. You know, he's fended off the blockers real well, defeated them, and gotten up and into position to make the quarterback have to deal with him. Final seconds, third quarter. Quarters in the books from the very first Mobile Alabama Bowl. Texas Christian had a 21-7 halftime lead. Jamie Wilson cut into that one. We'll head to the fourth with Texas Christian on top 21-14. On third down, Casey Printers completes one to Ladanian Tomlinson, who's well short of the first down. And all of a sudden, 
Tim Rose's East Carolina defense is rising up and playing well. Well, they've taken away the big weapon. They told Tomlinson, basically, you're not going to carry the ball in the second half. We're going to dictate that and make the quarterback beat us and run the ball. Only two carries in the second half for Tomlinson and then that pass there. Royce Huffman is deep. So put it away. Barefoot and all. Out of bounds. Inside the 30-yard line. Not a good effort from Huffman. Texas Christian on top, back to Mobile. ESPN 2's exclusive presentation of the 1999 Mobile Bowl is presented by GMAC. And your local GMAC Platinum Dealers are proud sponsors of the inaugural Mobile Alabama Bowl. Back in Mobile, Rich Waltz, Rod Gilmore, Don McPherson. East Carolina with the football, their own 27. Down by seven. As we start the fourth quarter. Gerard, a quick throw, and it's picked off. Russell Gary, he's 10, he's 5, he's touchdown, Texas Christian. TCU defense. David Gerard misread it. He had the pressure coming. He thought man to man. He thought blitz. Yes, blitz, but zone blitz. Didn't see the safety sitting in the zone there waiting for the pass. Gary stepped in front. That was all she wrote. How about some credit to Gary Patterson? coordinator with that scheme. Chris K. Lackey with the extra point. You can see Steve Logan say, what happened? And what happened was they saw the pressure. They felt the pressure. They thought man-to-man -man coverage behind it, but no. Now watch this. Go uh, Gerard is thinking, oh, right away, he's got a way to throw it. He figured his tight end, man-to-man -man was open, had shielded the defensive guy away, but he was coming across, he was sitting in his zone, he just watched Gerard the entire way, watched his eyes, and went right to the ball. <laughs> Gary Patterson's defense, the best in the WAC. And how about the WAC conference, Rod Gilmore? Maligned a bit. They're representing themselves quite well tonight. LaDainian Tomlinson has been held in check, but Casey Printers has not been. And despite their mistakes, Texas Christian is on top. Yeah, they've done a nice job of it. You know, you'd think that if you could hold Tomlinson in check, you'd be ahead in the ballgame. But Printers, talk about stepping up. That freshman has stepped up, made some, play, some plays, and that defensive speed has really neutralized East Carolina. to kick off. 30-yard line. It's Rashawn Burns. Flags go down. As does Burns. Penalty, this spot, first Hey, Riz, let's go back to that interception that really changed the complexion of the game. Now watch, here's your safety over here. There's Gary, and Gerard never sees him. He's thinking man-to-man, -man, and now you see him move. Zone defense, zone coverage. He just goes and makes a football play. He goes right to the ball, reads the quarterback's eyes, and just knocks it away. Takes it away back for the touchdown. 
Gerard read pressure, thought man-to-man, -man. wasn't there. Great play by Gary. It's a very good secondary for Texas Christian. And none of them are seniors. Gary is a junior. Drop play to Wilson. Sean Worthen was all over it. Well, let me ask you a question about this TCU program. We've seen Bill Snyder, K-State, turn around that program where people said you couldn't win, you couldn't recruit. But now you're looking at a TCU team, and certainly Coach Brand believes that, hey, in Texas, where there are a lot of good high school players, maybe he can build a program like that. What do you think? There is only one non-Texas player in the starting 22. He thinks that Texas Christian is a sleeping giant. Jamie Wilson. Russell Gary made another good play. They may be a sleeping giant, but they've got to deal with the big boys in Texas. Certainly the University of Texas, the Texas A&M, and don't forget Texas Tech also recruits in the state. Well, they'll step into the Conference USA in two years. They'll step out of the whack. They'll join East Carolina in that conference. Blitz, Garrard going deep, but he overthrows DeLeo Dodd. Hey, Rich. TCU has been so effective, they've made East Carolina do things that they told us they would never do. You know, what we saw in that last play was maximum protection. They sent only three receivers out. They kept two backs in to block. That is not East Carolina's game. They like to send four and five guys out, but they can't protect the quarterback doing it that way. Bays trying to land it inside the 20, and he does at the 15-yard line. Texas Christian pulled a big upset last year at a bull, and they're on the verge of doing it again in Mobile. His longest winning streak and a whole lot of pride. The Motor City Bowl, Marshall BYU, Monday at 1.30 on ESPN. Twenty-eight fourteen. the Horned Frogs on top. We've been told that's the frog walk. But it may be a little early to start dancing. The frog walk. To the 17-yard line. Now, frogs don't walk, do they? Uh, frogs just kind of, you know, jump and leap, but they don't walk. Do well, they? they hop, but they don't hop around here because frog legs are kind of a staple around Ooh. these these parts. Did you get a hold of some frog legs last night, pal? No, 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 no. <laughs> I'll do the Mardi Gras beats, but I, I draw the line. <laughs> KC Printers and Texas Christian with a two touchdown lead. Tomlinson really hasn't broken out, and he's to the 20 yard line. Yeah, that's not quite his style. He was dancing a little bit too much in the backfield. Usually when they run inside, he just slams it right up in there. At the time, he's kind of kind of dancing, tippy toeing, trying to find a hole. Doesn't normally do that. Patrick Bateau comes in for this snap. Dennis Franchoni has brought Bateau in. Oh, this will be Slash again. Huh? Cordell Stewart. Whoops. DJ Robertson motion. Tomlinson on the quick pitch. He's got the first down. Flags go down. think that Bateau has run anything other than the load option when he's come in. Looks like they're going to bring TCU back. But every time Bateau comes into the ball game, he's getting out on the edge on that speed option, that load option outside and making a play. 
holding offense, 10 yards, spot foul, repeat the down. The call is holding. Into the play, and Jeff Carr, he's wrapped around, got a hand on the face mask as yeah. well. Well, officials have been off for a while too. Their timing is off, they've missed a couple calls. This one is pretty blatant. That's a personal foul. That was pretty flagrant. Point of foul mark off, so it's still third down and short. Option with Vitell. He's got the first down to the 32. Fabina Green, the stop for East Carolina. You know, Steve Logan made an interesting comment to us yesterday about the option and its place in, in football. He says it's great for neutralizing the blitz, and he really expects that someday someone will take it to the NFL and incorporate it into a, their passing attack because it's easy to teach, and if you run it properly, he doesn't believe that your quarterback gets beaten up a lot. And right now, he's seeing the other quarterback run that option at his team. Vitell will stay in. Tomlinson knocked out of bounds. Rod, we've seen a lot of teams in college football in the last four or five years put the option in simply to take pressure. The eight men in the box was a big defensive innovation. That's kind of the, the wrinkle that offenses have used to defend that. Well, and it works because when you see option football, you have to play assignment football. You have to assign somebody to the quarterback, somebody to the pitch, and if it's a triple option, someone to the dive. When you have eight men in the box, you can't assign them to all those guys. You can't do that, and you have a problem. That's why people have gone to the option to break people out of the eight men in the box. Coach uh, Fran, not real pleased. Looks like he's going to take a timeout as the play clock runs down. Someone lost a shoe. I think it was a shoe. Kind of stands out, you know? Well, you talk about the option and, and how a lot of coaches have brought it in. Maybe the pioneer of that, the ability to run the option and yet throw the football, is a guy who his senior season led the nation in passing. But everyone says, oh, yeah, he was an option guy. He's Don McPherson. Don, it's been an interesting 10, 12 years to see that offense kind of filter out throughout college football, hasn't it? It really has, Rich. And one of the things that the option did for us is that it keeps teams out of man coverage and also keeps them from blitzing people. That loosens up the defense and enables you to do so many more things with your pass game. In fact, we talked with one of the coaches earlier, one of the defensive coaches, who said he didn't blitz the entire game. And after the game, someone said, why didn't you blitz? He said, because they may have run the option. It's just having it in your package that loosens defense up. What are the difficulties of a quarterback in, in, in adjusting to that? Because a lot of passing quarterbacks have had to learn to run that thing, haven't they? They really have. And, and the difference is getting into an attack mode. As an option quarterback, you have to attack the defensive end. Not many quarterbacks, as you can imagine, want to attack a defensive end. It, it's usually the other way around. Quarterbacks are kind of smart. Why would you go attack somebody who's about 275 to 80? Patel stays in on the series. Tomlinson, nice play on the outside by Anthony Adams to the 35-yard line. And it will bring up third down. You know, Donnie Mack just talked to you about attacking that defensive end. And we just saw Bateau do that. You'll see him come this way over here. Watch that defensive end right there. That's Reggie Hempel right outside. He's going to step up, and now quarterback comes right at him and forces him to make a decision, makes it a little late, gets the ball out there. It's a good job by the quarterback attacking that defensive end. Third down. Casey Printers. Jeff Carr runs him out of bounds. Boy, Carr, the senior out of Salisbury, North Carolina, is seemingly everywhere. Well, he has been everywhere. With his speed, he can make those plays. Guy 235, 6'4", but he runs very well. You saw that on that play at the goal line where he shot inside, almost made the play. But he's got great wills for an inside linebacker. Remember, 
Remember, East Carolina has blocked eight kicks this year. They don't come after this one. Stokes lets it bounce. And it's down to the 38-yard line. A very big series for East Carolina. We get back. This Fred Choney talking it over right now with Casey Printers, 28-14, Texas Christian. Saturday, 8.30 Eastern on ESPN2. Sports Century takes a look back at athletes 9 through 3 on its list of the 50 greatest athletes of the 20th century. Only Muhammad Ali, Jim Brown, Michael Jordan, and Babe Ruth remain on the countdown. ESPN will unveil the athletes on Friday night, and then on Sunday, ABC will give you one and two. A little razzle-dazzle. Tim Maiden's going to throw it. Wide open is Scarborough. Incomplete. He got it. He got it at the 12. Chapel made the catch. He lost his footing. 48 yards. He wanted to make sure that he caught that. Richard Austin, the redshirt freshman quarterback, the backup was in at wide receiver, and then came over and picked up this ball. Now, this is the quarterback who gets the ball. That's the quarterback, the backup quarterback who went in, in as a wide receiver, and Chapel was wide open. Five catches, 116 yards. Leonard Henry with the carry. And Henry is at the 14-yard line. That play was set up. That last play was set up by the option that they kept running, and they weren't having any, any success, but they kept running it. And then when they came back with the fake option, wide receiver pass off of it, it paid off. And maybe the spark that East Carolina needs. Chapel in motion. Gerard to the end zone, incomplete. Rashawn Burns, his tight end, was the intended receiver. And right now, it's very important for East Carolina to understand they're not going to get man-to-man -man coverage down here, no matter what. And they, they'd like to have it because they'd like to get a matchup with Chapel, but it, it's not going to happen. They're going to get zone blitz. They're going to get zone. And it's very important for Garrard to understand that and not get confused and throw into coverage. They're, they're showing him man. He thinks it might be man, but they're not going to play man. He'll go down. Schobel got him again. He bobbled the ball, but East Carolina gets it back. On third and 11, now it's fourth down and very long. And great coverage by TCU. Their guys were hopping around trying to, to, to show some man-to-man -man coverage and confuse the run. They dropped back and played zone coverage out of it, and nobody was open. And Garrard just held the ball and had nothing there. He's going to get the same thing here on this fourth down play. He will not get man-to-man -man coverage. This is a long fourth down. Fourth and 19. They've got to get to the three for a first down. Garrard steps up, fires it, incomplete. A crunching hit on Keith Stokes. Yeah. Yeah, and he threw that one right into coverage. And they were sitting in a two-deep zone just waiting for him to come across the middle. And Stokes paid the price for it. A lot of courage, Rich, going over the middle to try and get this ball. But he's running right into two guys that are sitting there waiting for him. There you see safeties all around, and there comes the other guy. Bang. Reggie, Reggie Hunt. Hunt coming over. He could have made that play, but he knew he was thrown into coverage. And his receiver... Stokes was hung out. You surprised that they went for it on fourth down that long? Yeah, it didn't show a lot of patience there. I mean, sometimes you, you get what you can, you know, you take your points. Tomlinson. Tomlinson's outside. And down he goes to the 37. And that's an emotional letdown for East Carolina defensively. I mean, their team didn't come away with any points. And now what happened? They're not ready. They're not mentally focused. Tomlinson gets out and picks up a first down on the first carry. Steve Logan. It's been a difficult trip for Logan. On his way down with his team and his family, he found out that his wife's mother passed away. And in preparation for this football game, it has not been easy. In fact, I think his family left and went back while he stayed down here to prepare for this ball game. Certainly, he was distracted by all of that. 
Tomlinson to the 42-yard line. Pernell Griffin made the stop. Now Texas Christian is going to try to take some time off this clock. There's a late flag. It stops the clock. And that flag, that official... Like conduct, that. TCU, 15 yards, still first down. I think Tomlinson said something at the end of the play. And the official pulled his flag and threw it about 25 feet in the air and looked right at Tomlinson. Whatever he said had to be pretty bad to get flag for that one right away like that. It's a big flag at 15 yards. Sportsmanlike conduct. And they'll back it up for 15. Slashing back in the ball game. Patrick Patel. Tomlinson 108. East Carolina. Minus 16. Yeah, that's because of all the sacks that they've had. They average 170 a game on the ground. Patel, good job of stringing the option out. Yeah. Good play. Smart decision by Patel. Had he pitched that ball, that could have been a problem for them. Rod, that, away from it. that man right there is Dan Dodd. You know where he spent his spring? Do tell. At East Carolina. He went to, a lot of coaches go to different places to learn things, and Dan Dodd wanted to learn Steve Logan's offense. So he went there, he was in the quarterback meetings. And wouldn't you know, Texas Christians play East Carolina. It, was, it wasn't a boondoggle. He actually learned something when he was there, and he's using it against East Carolina. The toe swallowed up Jeff Parr at the 20. Well, East Carolina is really thinking about putting some pressure on and trying to make a play happen. You'll see them come inside. They're going to come with a double blitz inside with their linebackers. It's Jeff Carr and Pernell Griffin coming inside, making the play. The clock really is not a friend for East Carolina. But field position might be after this kick. ECU did a nice job of taking some time off the clock, Rich. Yeah, you can see Huffman looking right at that play clock, which is right below the goal post at the other end of the field. Stokes. He gets outside, and Stokes has got a lane. Keith Stokes is down at the 35-yard line. And East Carolina is not dead yet. A 25-yard return. Remember, it's an East Carolina team that has come from behind many times this year. They'll have to do it again tonight. 5-14 left in this Mobile, Alabama Bowl. Texas Christian, a two-touchdown lead. But remember, East Carolina has come from behind many times this year. Their biggest and most impressive comeback down 20, second half to then top 20 Miami. Jamie Wilson started it with a long touchdown run. That brought it to 23-10. Wilson again on the draw to 23-17. Then David Garrard found Keith Stokes. He got loose for the touchdown. And an emotional game that had to be moved to Raleigh because of the flooding from Hurricane Floyd. East Carolina beats Miami. Miami was number nine. Steve Logan and the Pirates will have to do it again. Swing pass to Wilson. 
There's that man, Russell Gary, again. Well, the TCU defense, it works perfectly. Force everything outside and let your fast safeties run and make the play. It's worked for them almost all night, Rich. So the that's, clock continues to run down. That's a win-win. Make the tackle inside, don't give up much yardage. The clock continues to run. Texas Christian had to burn a timeout while we were gone. Garage throw. That's that's intercepted. Will they give it a catch or an interception? Jason Goss was right in the middle. Texas Christian feels they have the ball. East Carolina thinks it's a reception. A Goss made a tremendous play. With the offense, simultaneous possession. You know, defensive back never get a break. Jason Goss read this thing and got in there. Look at this. This guy jumps all over on Key Stokes right there. He catches the ball. Then he gets pushed right into Stokes. There is no possession by Stokes at any point in time. Look at that. That's clearly a pick. I submit that as evidence that defensive backs get no respect. <laughs> Sorry, this is... It's not an election here. Swing pass Wilson to the 40. Down to the 35-yard line. It's a gain of about seven. However, it's going to be a long, long fourth down. Well, we've talked about players and timing official. And they've had a layoff, too. And we've had some missed calls, and that was a really blown call. It should be TCU football going the other way. We've had a couple of face mask penalties that were blown. Fourth down, 10. Gerard to the end zone. Not even close. And on fourth down and 10, East Carolina will turn it over on down. Sean Worthen pressuring Gerard. Uh, how about the job Gary Patterson has done with that defense? And they have thwarted a very good offense. They've made David Gerard a really fine quarterback and confused and beaten up quarterback tonight. He's thrown into coverage a number of times. He's been sacked a number of times. They really haven't been able to muster any kind of offense all night. The Horn Frogs will try to run some clock. Clock continues to roll. Lad Peebles Stadium. Mobile, Alabama, the very first Mobile, Alabama Bowl. Over 34,000 on hand. Texas Christian underdogs, but not playing like it tonight. Somewhere, 90-year-old Sammy Baugh is smiling, the former Texas Christian quarterback. Patrick Bateau is in, and he'll give it to Tomlinson. Back when Texas Christian was in power, they won a national championship at 35. Sammy Baugh was their quarterback. Sammy Baugh was, you know who else is smiling? Dan Jenkins, a man who wrote many books about Texas Christian and semi-tough and the great football program at TCU, and your favorite, Billy Clyde Puckett, Jake Miller. <laughs> well, somewhere they're probably happy right now, too. <laughs> Wonderful fictional characters and semi-tough. Last year, USC came in as a favorite, and Dennis Franchoni, Patrick Bateau, dominated the Trojans in El Paso in the Sun Bowl. Well, he has the formula for the bowl season, clearly. Last year, he did a great job. This year, it's worked very well for them. This weekend, Sports Century unveils the top four athletes of the 20th century. Friday night, 10 Eastern, ESPN presents athletes number four and number three. Then on Sunday on ABC, the top two athletes of the 20th century will be announced at 5 Eastern, Muhammad Ali, Jim Brown, Michael Jordan, and Babe Ruth remain. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Part of the Go Network, go.com. 
You know, the suspense of those things, that's great. But what I love, those portraits of those players are so riveting. You just sit there and you just, you don't want to move. You want to watch and eat up a little history about everything in their background. Third down and four. East Carolina absolutely needs a stop. Bateau is stopped. And a good pop by Jeff Carr at the 40. And Jeff Carr has popped a whole lot of folks tonight. He's really been, you know, the player on defense for them. Right now, clock management for the lack of time is a real issue for East Carolina. East Carolina is out of timeouts. Coming up next, the NFL's greatest moments. Not only does Steve Logan's Pirates need a score, they need a score and an onside kick recovery. Well, you, just, you have to give a lot of credit to Texas Christian University. And, you know, their players came out with a lot of enthusiasm. They played hard. I thought that East Carolina was a little bit flat early on. And these guys took it to them. And they were more physical. They ran the option outside. And when they started getting somewhere with that, they started pounding them back inside, saying, hey, we're a physical team. They've out hit them tonight. So Huff is on to punt it. Stokes is deep. That's going to take a couple big plays. There may not be enough time for him, but Stokes has got to get a good return. A great kick by Humphrey. And Stokes makes a fair catch at the 18-yard line. 43 yards on the punt. Texas Christian, the Horned Frogs, were down 7-0. Then LaDainian Tomlinson got busy. Tomlinson from two yards out. Mike Scarborough, a touchdown from Casey Printer. Tomlinson, a three-yard run at the close of the first half. And then Russell Gary with a 32-yard interception return for a score. A 28-14 Texas Christian lead. East Carolina's got to go a long ways. They started on the sidelines. Jamie Wilson makes the catch. Sent out of bounds by Bo Springfield. Well, Casey, you will play a very soft zone. They've, they're up by two scores. They can give up those things. They, they can even give up some catches over the middle. They just don't want to give up a big play. They've got to tackle well, keep East Carolina in bounds. They'll easily win the ball game if they do that. Gerard. Chapel can't catch it. Third down. And 15 yards for the nation's leading rusher. It wasn't easy tonight against a real good East Carolina defense. They had to persevere tonight. There were times when he went long stretches without touching the ball, but he had to pound inside on a number of occasions to get tough yardage for them, and they controlled the clock. Not big numbers, but I'm sure he'll take this big night. Two of 13 are the Pirates on third down. Complete. Chapel was out of bounds. And the Pirates will have to go for it on fourth down. Uh, Rich, as we watch bowl games going forward, this one is an example of, of how one team comes prepared, one team is ready to play, and they're enthusiastic, and the other one was a little bit flat. And then the timing issue. We saw some things where people were dropping balls, overthrowing, just not quite in sync. We might see that in some other bowl games as we go into next week. Garage in trouble. Wilson, down he goes, and this one is all but over. Thank 
respect. East Carolina, for years, talked about getting respect, having people respect their program. TCU, their mantra, this week will get some respect for themselves and for the WAC. And the WAC and the TCU and Coach Fred Choney will get nothing but respect out of this one. And they'll leave the WAC and move on over to Conference USA. Tomlinson. Tomlinson. He's out of bounds. Two flags are down at the 20 and at the 15-yard line. Holding against Texas Christian. Last year, Texas Christian had a big win over USC. We asked Coach Fran, what would a win in this ball game do for his program? This would reinforce national credibility, I think. Uh, this is a top 20 team. Uh, they're a good football team. They've beaten some good people. Uh, maybe we could inch into that top 25 in, in the last uh, poll. Uh, I think we're in the 30s somewhere right now. And so, uh, again, national credibility uh, would be a big factor for us in this game. Well, you heard it right there. Coach Fran, six years at New Mexico, and he breathed life into a program that, that had really been down. And he has turned this place around in a heartbeat. A one in ten team he inherited. They've gone seven and five, and they're about to be eight and four here. Tomlinson down to the 21 yard line. Norris McCleary made the stop. Texas Christian coming up NFL's greatest moments the very first Mobile Alabama Bowl in its final stages Casey Printers the freshman quarterback will give it to the nation's leading rusher Tomlinson to the 20. Steve Logan, it's been a difficult trip. He lost his mother-in-law a few days ago. His team overcame so many things this year. A difficult early season schedule. A tragic and catastrophic flooding of Greenville. His team rallied. They were in the top 20 most of the year. A disappointing end to the season for a team, and they thought they are their season was magical, but they were destined to win this ball game. Destiny ran into a determined TCU team. Tomlinson holds on to the football. He's down to the 17-yard line. A big win for Coach Fran. And I think Rod Gilmore, he'll get that respect. Absolutely. Absolutely. A long night for East Carolina. Texas Christian wins the very first Mobile Alabama Bowl. For Don McPherson and Rod Gilmore, I'm Rich Waltz. The Horned Frogs are going back to Fort Worth with another bowl win. Good night from Mobile, Alabama. This has been a presentation of ESPN. Proud to... under the weather today. Yeah, and it looks like it's food poisoning. We, some of us have had the flu all week, but apparently this is a food poisoning issue. Some 10 players from Arizona State are down with food poisoning, and there are three for Wake Forest. Most notably for Arizona State, it's the backup quarterback, John Leonard. And one of the reasons that's significant, of course, Ryan Keeley is already out with an injury, and so he was going to share time today. He took